Hello you guys, welcome to KGB Bible Stories. Today we have a beautiful Bible study to share with you. But before we start, I would like to give you an invitation. So I am subscribed to this uh, YouTube channel called Pioneer Health and Missions. And these pastors have beautiful, beautiful message uh, from the Word of God. And right now they have this series called, Have You Met the God We Worship? And it's really beautiful. Right now, yesterday I watched part one and it was super crisp clear. And you get to understand really the God we worship. And so please go ahead and check out that YouTube channel, Pioneer Health and Missions. They also have it in Spanish. Um, let me see if I can find Okay, I will put the link in the description of both of them, the English one and the Spanish, and you can come and check out those videos. Uh, you're welcome to share them, and let us go ahead and start with the word prayer. So now, let's grab our Bible. I have my Bible here ready, and I have the lesson here ready, so let us bow our heads and let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we wish to study thy word and to come without any preconceived ideas, with any thoughts of what we thought was right. We want you to come and teach us and open our understanding. We pray that you help me with my speech, that I may properly pronounce the words to your glory and for the understanding of all the people, that they may become doers of your word and not just hearers. Please convert us. In Jesus' holy name, bless thy word. Amen. Amen. So let us go ahead and grab our lesson. And so this lesson is lesson 11. Where do we go when we die? <clears throat> and you guys know how to obtain this, right? I've told you before, but let's go ahead and tell you one more time. And so this is www.thesureword.org org the sure word org and so we're going to try to accomplish the 25 questions in here and let us go ahead and open our bibles to the book of job chapter 21 i'm going to be using my app job 21 verse 32 <clears throat> yes shall he be brought forth to the grave and shall remain in the tomb that's the verse. Let's go ahead and read the question. Where do we go when we die? Let's go ahead and read it one more time. Yet shall he be brought to the grave. That's very important. Brought to the grave and shall remain in the tomb. Where do we go when they die? Does it say we go to heaven and meet the Lord in the air? No, it doesn't say that. Uh, as a matter of fact, that verse that I quote is from 1 Thessalonians 4, probably verse 16 or 17. But that um, has to do with the second coming of Jesus and the resurrection of the just. By the way, check out the Bible study already there that is called the hope of the righteous. Psalms 89, 48, underneath question number one, it says, What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? What man is that? Do you know any man that hasn't died back in the years? Everyone has died, right? Almost everyone. There is very few people. Let's go ahead and talk about some of those men. What about Moses? Moses was resurrected. He ascended to heaven. Enoch was translated to heaven and Elijah. And also we are told that when Jesus uh, resurrected, there were some people that were ascended to heaven too, which we believe is the 24 elders. Um, they're resurrected from their graves. There was a big earthquake as soon as Jesus died. And they want to go witness to everybody. Um, but so far, it's only been those that have gone to heaven. The rest of the people, they go to the grave. Whether they're in the grave or whether they're in uh, powder, ashes. Okay, that will be the grave still, in a way, you know? Because some people may not be able to afford a full grave and all of the things that go along with it. Question number two. Oh, by the way, there's another verse here. It says, I said in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. That was I said, 33, 10. We're all going to be deprived. If we die, we're deprived of days, aren't we? 
that's pretty good understandable for every human being I hope question number two the wicked are kept in their graves until they're resurrected for what purpose what is the purpose that God is going to resurrect them and this is just touching a little bit more on it so it could be crisp clear the proper understanding of what happens to the resurrected ones so let's go to Job 21 verse 30 that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. So the day of destruction, that's what they're reserved for because God is going to give them their reward. Uh, and they're going to also be brought forth to the day of wrath. There's a Bible verse underneath, Job 14, 12. So men lieth down and riseth not. Till the heavens be no more, they shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. And so let's go to question number three. Like Job, the righteous dead are to wait in the grave until what takes place? Job 14, 13 and 14. It says, Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed. And thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. So that time that Job was waiting for was for the change of time. And we're going to read, there's a little time in the verse underneath, question number three. It says, we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling, this is the twinkling, and open and eyes shut. Open and shut. That's a twinkling, okay? Um, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And so, like Job, the righteous that are to wait until the grave for what? For the change to come. God is going to change the righteous, their body. Because we are mortal. We are more than capable to die. Uh, only God is immortal. And so, we need to be immortal. Like, to be able to go into heaven. Okay? Um, so, let's go to question number four. They that are Christ will be giving life at what great event? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's go to verse 22. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. For us in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall we shall be made alive. And so let's go ahead and notice that, that verse. For us in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall be made alive. Because Jesus Christ came to forgive us of our sins, to die on the cross for our sins, because of Him, we can be resurrected and we can have immortality. Only if we accept the gift of eternal salvation and put away our sins and our overcomers. We cannot carry sin to heaven. There is no such thing. Uh, it's very clear. Very, very clear. Ronnie? So let's go ahead and go to the next verse that says in the book of Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Let's go to verse 34. It says, um, so I want you to notice the answer for question number 4 in case it wasn't clear for you. They that are Christ will be giving life at what event? At the second coming of Christ. Okay, and we're going to continue to see it in case something is not properly clear. Okay, so Acts 2.34, the question says, Has David, the man after God's own heart, already gone to heaven? Is David in heaven right now, you guys? Let's let the Bible answer that for us. So we're going to Acts chapter 2, verse 34, for David is not. For David is not ascended into the heavens. Is David in heaven? No, he's not. But he said unto himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand. 
Where is David now? Let's go to verse 29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. So that was here speaking, um, Stephen. I believe it's Stephen or Peter. No, it's Peter. Peter knew there was a grave where David was buried. And so what happened? Did David ascend to heaven? Was there any special privilege for him? No, there was not. He had to wait in the grave for the second coming of Christ. There was only a few little people that have gone to heaven. I continue to repeat, Elijah, Moses, and Enoch. And then those that resurrected, when Jesus Christ died, please watch that video that says the hope of the righteous. I believe it has three parts, if I'm not mistaken. And we do read the verse there, I believe so. And so let's go to question number seven. What has become of him? We're talking about David, remember? So Acts 13. Acts chapter 13, 36. It says, for David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. Um, falling asleep sometimes is used as not only sleeping, <laughs> but also a death. If you look at John 11, you see the Lazarus, what Jesus said, he sleepeth. But Jesus knew that Lazarus was dead. And so back then they used that word, sleeping for dead. And so David fell asleep and was what? He was laid unto his fathers. Back then when they died, they had a cave where they put all of the family members when they died. And so he was laid with his father. So whoever was his father, which was Jesse, obviously we know the Bible tells us that. Jesse was there. Who else was there? Booz and Oban and all of his fathers there. And so that's what they did. So David fell asleep and he is laid with his fathers. In other words, it's in his grave. And that's what it says, and so corruption, because when a body dies, what happens? We know the worms are going to go in there and start eating the flesh. And you're left with bones only. Um, yeah. So, let us go to the next question. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4.16. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. Okay, and let's go ahead and ask the question. Question number 8, okay? How will God wake up the righteous dead? How will God wake up the righteous dead? Let's go ahead and read verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Let's read that one more time, because I really want you guys to see what the Lord is saying here. For the Lord himself, that's talking about Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. So we see a shout, we see the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. It's going to be a tremendous loud event. You know, there's this kind of people that they believe there's a little secret rapture. Yeah, that's unbiblical. Don't believe such false lies. We see, obviously, that the second coming of Jesus will wake up the righteous. And it's going to have a loud shout of the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. So God is going to wake up the righteous. So God, is he going to do it with this child, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God? It's going to be loud enough. Um, and even I could just quote right now, John 1, 7, Every eye shall see him. Even those that pierce him shall well because of him. And so every eye that is alive is going to see them, see Christ and his angels. And so Matthew 24, 31 says, And he shall send his angels with the great son of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. As we continue to see once again, this is like a repetition of the other study, we will see that Jesus never steps on the floor and goes seeking for his saints. No. The Bible says very clearly in the verse 17, look what it says right here. Then we which are alive and remain 
shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So notice what it says. We were alive. If you're alive when Jesus Christ comes, you're going to be remain, and you're going to be caught up together. If you're caught up together, you're taken from your place up with the Lord in the clouds. So the Lord is in the clouds waiting. The angels are going to go and pick up the saints and go gather them, wake them up from the... God is going to... That coming of Christ will resurrect the dead, righteous dead, of course. And so the angels go and gather the elect and bring them to Jesus. Jesus is not going to touch the floor. So if you know some kind of false prophets up there in Russia or in some other part of the world, you know they're false prophets because the Bible tells us very clearly... First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, that Jesus never touches the earth. He's not going to be hanging on your homes. No. Those are false prophets, you guys. So let's go ahead and go to the next question, okay? Question number nine. Let's go to Job 17. Job chapter 17, verse 3. Thank you. It says in that verse, but let's first read the question. Until resurrection morning, where do the dead wait? So, until the resurrection, where are the dead going to be waiting for this special uh, second coming of Jesus? It says, lay down now, put me in a surety with thee. Who is he that will strike hands with thee? And it's 13, I read the wrong verse. Job 17, 13. If I wait, the grave is my house. I have made my bed in darkness. So where's all those righteous men going to be at? They could be in powder or in bones in some kind of grave. Or they could be scattered in powder. Some people like to scatter those powders in the ocean and rivers and all the stuff. Whatever those powders are there, the Lord has enough power to resurrect them and give them life. And give them immortality in the twinkling of an eye. Okay? So let's go to the next question, number 10. Where did Jesus say the dead are? John 5, 28. So there is many people that believe the dead are in heaven. Well, what did Jesus himself say? So let's go ahead and read verse 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. So Jesus himself said that time that are in the graves are going to hear his voice. And so Jesus himself, verily, he's saying the dead are not in heaven. What will be the purpose of Jesus coming if the dead are in heaven? The righteous dead, of course. And I'm always referring to the righteous, not the wicked. We will talk about the wicked a little further on in this study, I believe. And so... The people are in the graves, whether they're righteous or holy, they're in power, they're in graves. But we're focusing right now on the saints. Okay? Let's go to the next question. Um, question number 11. What words did Jesus use to say that his friend Lazarus was dead? Let's go to John 11. John chapter 11. Let's go to verse 11. John, and this is the the I was quoting about Lazarus sleepeth. Okay, praise God, we get to read it in this study. So let's go ahead and go to John 11, 11 to 13. What words did Jesus use to say his friend Lazarus was dead? And we know that he used he was sleeping, but let the Bible tell us that. This thing said he after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Only God has enough power to resurrect um, somebody from the grave. There has been cases where people have been prayed over and people wake up out of a coma or wake up out of pretty much uh, medically concluded death. And so there are those miracles, okay? But the, notice what I'm saying here, okay? Because I want it to stay so clear. Many people think, oh, I died and I went to hell and I came back and I repent. And then there's people that claim, oh, I died and went to heaven and yeah, Jesus said it's not my turn yet, so I'm back in here. All of that is unbiblical and it's false. What it might have been a dream, you never know, but that is unbiblical. 
When you die, you die. When you go to heaven, you go 